Hi, I'm Ed Alexander, business attorney and founder of Alexander Abramson. Uh, welcome to our video series on selling your law practice. And today we're going to answer the most basic question that gets asked. Can I sell my law practice? And when I get this question, I look at it in two ways. First is that there are ethical issues. And the second is, is it practical to do it? So let's address the ethical issues first. Now, prior to 1990, we'd be having a completely different conversation about whether you could sell your law practice or not. Because at that time, the general rule was you cannot sell your law practice uh, because it is basically personal goodwill. And there was prohibition in most states against actually selling it. In 1990, that all changed. The ABA adopted Model Rule 1.17, which permitted the sale of an entire law practice. And there's a complicated process. We're going to get into that. Um, but then that was updated actually in 2002 to permit the sale of even just a subset of the law practice. And so um, the answer from an ethical standpoint is most definitely yes, you can sell a law practice. Now, you certainly have to dot the T's, dot the I's, and cross the T's, right? Uh, because uh, there are steps that you have to go through in this process. And to give you a kind of a, an overview of those steps, it requires, obviously, that you send notice to your clients of the impending sale. And then that they have an opportunity to say, no, I don't want to be part of that sale. The rule provides that you can... Uh, send the notice to them, certified mail, return receipt requested. So just as a side note, really important to maintain addresses and also important to maintain a status of who's your client and versus your closed matters. We'll get into that too. <clears throat> but the bottom line is you send a notice to your client discussing the impending sale. You get the return receipt back. Now a client has the option to opt out and say, no, I don't want my file to be included. Or alternatively, if they don't do anything, then you can include them. And so a 30-day period has to elapse from the time that the notice is sent until you close. But overall, um, that is the primary primary purpose and, and process within 1.17. And so as long as you follow with that, you can. Now that raises a host of issues, right? As I, I mentioned a couple of them, who's your client? Have you maintained files in that you've closed out files so you only have to send notice to certain clients? Um, if you're in a litigation practice, there's also uh, a level of court approval that has to go along with this as well. Um, but the other uh, component to that is um, making sure that your buyer is locked into the transaction the minute that you send out those notices. What you don't want to have happen is what happened to an attorney who called me not too long ago saying, hey, I, I had the practice all sold and the day before we were supposed to close, the buyer bailed on me, but I'd already sent my notices. So my clients think that I'm selling my practice. What are they going to do? Well, there's, there's ways to disincentivize uh, and the buyer from bailing out of the transaction. And that clearly is a key element to this. Okay, so what are what are some of the issues, other issues that we have to deal with? Well, we, we have to have adequate time. We have to have adequate time to send the notices and to make sure that the transaction close. Um, we need to make sure that the firm is actually saleable. Is it a sale? Does it do you have a saleable asset in the firm? Right. Uh, so what is a saleable asset? Well, it means um, ultimately that the buyer can pick up where you left off. Right? Because value in your firm is dependent upon the income that that firm generates and the likelihood that that income is going to continue in the future. Now, as we know, there's issues related to a transition where my clients know, like, and trust me, and now we have a buyer coming in, and we want that know, like, and trust, that relationship that they have with me to transition to that buyer. Making that happen is what makes your firm saleable or not saleable. And then obviously, if you have one and done clients, what is it that you're selling, right? It's, it's that client relationship, the ability to generate revenue off of that, plus your marketing relationships. So those are, those are some of the aspects of what makes your firm a saleable asset.
As a successful attorney, you should be excited about the prospect of selling your law firm and realizing the benefits of the hard work that you put into building it. With the right advisors, you can profitably and successfully sell your law practice. Regardless of your time frame, your first step to capitalizing on the investment you made is to develop a succession plan that works for you. Call or email us today to ask about our sale readiness assessment. During your sale readiness assessment, we will help identify your firm's strengths and weaknesses and develop a transition strategy that fits your particular circumstances. Until next time, thanks for watching.